Hi, I'm Drew. I'm the technical co-founder at AdmitHub. Uh, as you can see, we do conversational AI for college success. Basically, that means we build bots to help students um, get to and through college. Everything from financial aid to uh, if they skip class too much, we'll send them a message to see what's going on. Um, my background is education technology. I started a tutoring company uh, almost 12 years ago. Uh, built the software that runs the company. Uh, we have offices in Boston and New York City. I've also done some ed, ed tech work for the Hewlett Foundation uh, and edX. Uh, my business partner, uh, he has a career in ed tech, or higher ed as well. Uh, he was the first person in his family to go to college. Ended up being an admissions officer at Princeton, Penn, and Bowdoin, and most recently worked for the Common Application. So this is something we care about deeply, and um, I've always wanted to build a bot for myself. So, oh yeah, I should say at my tutoring company, I also tutored like between three and four thousand hours uh, while I was there. In any event, here's the agenda. Uh, Going to take you through, through some problems, a case study of one of our partners uh, that we're doing. Uh, actually, there's a research paper which will be published later this year. Um, talk a little bit about our architecture, some epic bot fails that we had. Uh, those are always fun, and maybe a little glimpse of the future. Uh, so to give you guys an sort of insight into the economics of college, most people don't realize these problems. Um, every year, uh, around 2.1 million people are admitted to college and say they're going to come. Uh, but 14% of them invariably melt. Um, that is, they just don't show up in September. Uh, this is bad for the colleges, it costs them billions, and it's bad for society because people who want to go to college don't. Uh, also, plenty of people fail to graduate just by dropping out even after they enroll. Um, that's actually even worse because then you have debt uh, and no degree. Um, so it costs society and, and these schools a lot of money. Uh, they have quite a leaky funnel. Um, so we chose chatbots uh, primarily from my experience knowing that text message was a great way to reach students, um, but the data shows it as well. Kids are tied to their phones, and as you'll see from our data, they maniacally text with our bot, which is great. Um, gives us a lot of data to chew through. Um, in any event, I'll get into the case study at Georgia State, which I think is the most interesting thing we've done. Uh, we branded the bot Pounce after their mascot. Pounce is a blue panther. Um, and one day, in oh, I should also mention that this is a randomized control trial. So Georgia State admitted around 7,200 students this year. Uh, and we were, uh, we randomized them and messaged about half. The other half was a control group that instead of the bot got, um, got human intervention. Um, it's also worth noting uh, that they had quite a problem with summer melt. Uh, it had gone from 14% to around 22% uh, over the last four years. So that's why would a college hire a bot company? Only out of desperation, apparently. <laughs> uh, in any event, we had great engagement. Uh, about 88% of people engaged with us. A lot of the people that didn't were just wrong phone numbers or that just bounced. Um, uh, high engagement was around 64%. We define that as you replied to us uh, on five separate occasions, uh, at least. Uh, we also had great uh, numbers for people who like rated the bot. 80% uh, gave it a four or five. That's out of five stars. Uh, I realize I should have put that in the slide. Uh, only two people gave it a one, uh, incidentally, and one of them, well, oddly enough, was <laughs> Our, our most vocal user. She had about 400 messages. I'm not sure why she gave it a one. We're trying to get her on the phone. Although, incidentally, she doesn't answer phone calls from humans. Um, we also got great numbers in terms of messages people sent us. As you can imagine, oftentimes we were like asking them questions, and they would not answer our questions, but just reply with questions of their own. Um, and when they did that, we found uh, that we were able to handle a lot of them. Uh, with frequently asked questions that we had trained our model on. Uh, but there were so many things from out of the domain. In fact, it turns out that of the, the 250 questions Georgia State gave us as their most frequently asked questions, uh, we ended up having to add a, a, around 700 more during the course of these four months. Um, luckily, still, bot performed great, responded in around seven seconds. Uh, I should say when we got something that was out of domain, uh, we forwarded it to a human on their staff 
uh, via email, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, and waited for them to respond. And then in our supervised machine learning process, would choose to train the bot with that question and answer or not. Um, also, overall, we had great success. Uh, Georgia State conveniently uh, had a record year. Uh, so we, they had the lowest melt in school history and highest number of students enrolling. Um, and we, you know, as compared to the control group, uh, moved the needle uh, from basically every single area we were focusing on. And they claimed that we exceeded their wildest expectations. So the key to success, by the way, with bots is low expectations. Um, just so you know. Um, let's see, so getting into the architecture a little bit, uh, as you can imagine, we do a lot of the things everyone else does. We have guided conversations, basically like choose your own adventure novels over text message, uh, taking you through a various workflow. Here's one for like parking permits. Um, not terribly exciting, but and again, oftentimes people will respond to the first question with a question of their own. Uh, so we figured out a way, instead of relentlessly re-prompting them, to actually give them answers and help control the context of the conversation. Um, here's a diagram of our most complex workflow. This is the one for filing your FAFSA, which is basically uh, like the form to get financial aid from the federal government. Um, think uh, tax forms, but worse. Uh, and then generally speaking, uh, this is what I was talking about earlier, sometimes people would ask us questions and we wouldn't know the answer. It wouldn't match with anything. It, it didn't hit our threshold for um, recognizing any of our existing understandings. And we would just simply send it to a human. Uh, really, uh, it turns out that uh, colleges hate um, technology uh, and did not want to log into our platform at all. Uh, so we made it so they never had to. Uh, we would just email them the question that the student had, uh, conversation history and some context about the student, and they would reply via email, and we just route it right back to the student. And then it would also come in a queue that we would review to say, is this something we want to add to the knowledge base or not? It turned out to be very handy for us and for them. Um, here's a brief glimpse at like our administrative back end. We'll be releasing this uh, to our, our clients. This is what we were using internally to triage and review uh, chat conversations, but uh, starting in October, which is next week, geez, uh, our clients will be doing it for us and we'll just be supervising their work. Uh, overall, it's simple supervised machine learning, um, reinforcement layer. You can update the knowledge base, add new understandings. Um, a human can also override the conversation at any time, which is nice. Um, that handshake someone was talking about. Uh, so other than architectural stuff, I'll get into <laughs> fun bot failure, because if anyone here has rolled a bot into production with many thousands of people, you know that it oftentimes really sucks. <laughs> um, and you have to be tolerant of failure. You have to review the logs uh, constantly and reply to people who have situations like this when they say, like, I hate you. And you're like, oh, man, we actually recognize that answer. This is the one that really bothers me because we, we knew the understanding that it matched with, but our client did not actually give us an answer. Um, so if there's no answer for uh, the matched uh, understanding, we fall back <laughs> invariably to the, the next closest match to try and say something. Um, so in this case, uh, we responded, uh, the feeling is mutual, um, which <laughs> feature or bug, this was the girl that had done like 400 messages. So at the office, we were kind of actually feeling this way anyhow. Um, another student said, I'm dropping out which is not a good thing, but we actually didn't expect anyone to say this. We never trained our model on this because you haven't enrolled yet. How can you drop out? Um, so I forget exactly what it matched to, but we, this is how we responded. It's, it took us about an hour. We, we got in there and we were like, you probably shouldn't drop out. Um, don't tell Georgia State much of this. Uh, that's why it's good to control the experience the first time you do it. Uh, it wasn't quite this bad, though, no, like genocide or um, neo-Nazis. Uh, it's good to also control how the knowledge gets added to your, your bot um, yourself, at least for the get-go. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about, uh, so we use microservices. So we have those like scripted workflows. That's written in Node. But we also have another server, which is written in Python now. 
Uh, that's basically how we uh, match uh, strings to understandings. So I, I hate building stuff. I'm an engineer. But if I can avoid building something, I generally do. Uh, so we tried uh, API.ai, wit.ai, and Watson. Uh, for many months, actually, we tried to get these. Um, they were they were less than stellar. I don't know if any of those people are in the room right now, but we didn't have a great experience. Uh, the next, actually, this was pretty good. We tried a, anyone technical. It's a Levenstein distance, which is basically like how many character types on a keyboard do I have to get to change one string into another? Uh, and then we just like boosted with keywords. Um, and actually, that was like stunningly good. That's pretty much what we did for Georgia State the whole time. And it got uh, around between 70 and 75% accuracy. Um, much more accurate than you'd expect. Although the challenge is like words like sentences like I love you and I hate you are startlingly similar uh, in number of characters. So it can cause problems. Um, now we have a machine learning model. We use deep, deep uh, reinforcement learning. We use NLTK, Spacey, NumPy, Keras, and TensorFlow. Um, and actually, oh, I, I wrote down the numbers because I didn't want to get them wrong. Um, so we do cross-validation, which means like you take your labeled training data and you lop off 20% and set it aside. You train a model on 80%, uh, and then you test it with the other 20 to be like, how good are we? Um, Number two, the Levenstein distance keyword boosting, which in production performed really well. Like, like I said, like 75%. <laughs> it performs terribly uh, when, you, when you're doing cross-validation. Uh, I think it was around 9%. Uh, but our deep learner, uh, which we're using now in production, uh, performs around 69 70%, um, which is great. Uh, makes for like, much more accuracy. Uh, so uh, we're getting there. We're not qu like people are still a little scared of bots. Uh, Waz loves them clearly. I too um, welcome our robot overlords. Um, <laughs> there's some hubbub out there in the community about artificial intelligence being like scary and terrifying and taking over the world. I, I don't think we're there yet. Um, but in order to either <laughs> get to a much smarter artificial intelligence and prevent it from putting us all in human petting zoos, uh, I think we need to collaborate more. And I think this is like my like big ask for this conference. I mean, I haven't been around so many bot builders before. And I really think we need to, I mean, I'm a huge uh, believer in open source. And while I'm probably not ready to open source our platform yet, I, I know most of you probably aren't either. Kudos to the Howdy team for beating us all to the punch. Um, I do think there's benefit to collaborating together. And basically, I'll show you my model if you show me yours. Or we could, like, basically a potluck for bots uh, or a botluck. I just coined that term, terrible hashtag. Um, in any event, that's what we did. This is who I am. I got a blog called Please Steal This Idea. Uh, a GitHub, and I'm a human being, and no presentation is complete without John Belushi. Um, so, anyone have any questions? Sure. Sorry, my boss was talking to me. Sorry about that. You have a question? I had to work. Um, you may have covered it, the onboarding, and I might have missed it, but um, I'm just really curious with the with the college, um, how, uh, and then when they're doing FAFSAs, and that's a lot of personal information, again, kind of doing the, sorry, again, kind of doing the, um, oh, let me try and get it here. Okay, what I'm saying is, is there just this privacy policy that someone goes like, I'm enrolling, so in, in there it says a chat bot's going to chat at you or text you, or, yeah, where, you know, is that happen? And then also, if that does, are you getting the numbers from their enrollment? Like, how are you getting these people, these kids on there first? Oh, um, so colleges have uh, different uh, rules when it comes to like the Can Spam Act. So they don't ha need express written consent. They can have implied oral consent. Uh, in fact, whenever you apply to a college, you're actually 
giving them consent to text you. They all, all the kids have to put their cell phone numbers in. Um, and so all we have to do is do an opt out. And actually, we quite honestly did onboarding terribly. Uh, <laughs> they had no idea what was happening. Just like one day they woke up and at six in the morning they had a text from this blue panther called Pounce. Um, and they weren't expecting it. In fact, we did some focus groups and a lot of the kids reported that they didn't even know they could reply. Um, they were like, oh, I just assumed it was like that, um, that Remind app that is popular among K-12 institutions. So uh, in short, we did onboarding terribly, but you can just send the messages if you're working directly with the school, which is great. Um, hi, I have, I have two questions. Um, one question is in these other messaging platforms like, like Facebook Messenger, uh, and kick and we, they have richer interfaces where you have buttons and other kinds of things that aren't available on SMS. Um, I'm just curious, like, do you have any thoughts about that or how, um, I don't know, was it more challenging or less or, or better to not have those available? Uh, yeah, we support other messaging platforms, notably Facebook. Uh, it takes us about eight hours to add a messaging platform to our system. The reason we chose SMS is because at Georgia State only, I think it was 75% of students had a smartphone. And it turns out that the ones who like needed the most help from us, like the low income, first generation, underserved communities were the ones with, without smartphones. Um, so we found it was just a, more democratic to reach them over SMS. And just to, another a quick question with SMS, are, are the, do you find that the costs, were the costs high at all? Because it, like if you use Twilio and it costs, I don't know, like a penny per um, message and I don't, you had like many hundreds of thousands of interactions, does that, does it, is, it, is it worth it or? We didn't pay for the messages. Yeah. Luckily the college paid. Uh -huh. But yes, the costs are high. But I mean, not crazy. I mean, you know, 300, 400,000 messages are only, what, $4,000? It's not nuts. Yep. Yep. Anyone else? Give Drew a hand. Thank you very much, Drew. That was really neat.